Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense, and this is my rheumatology playlist. In previous videos, we have discussed osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Today, let's compare between the two, and let's get started. As you know, we divide rheumatological disease into non-inflammatory and inflammatory. Osteoarthritis is non-inflammatory. So, you're saying that the knee is not inflamed in osteoarthritis? Shut up, that's not what I said. What I say is, there is no systemic inflammation in osteo. Of course, the knee can be inflamed. However, systemically, throughout your body, it's non-inflammatory. That's why ESR and CRP are usually normal. But in rheumatoid arthritis, of course, it's a systemic stinking inflammation. Non-inflammatory arthritis such as osteo, we have no cardinal signs of inflammation. It is asymmetrical. It's worse in the evening because it's mechanical. The more you move, the worse it gets. ESR and CRP, these inflammatory tests, are normal. But in inflammatory arthritis, we do have the cardinal signs of inflammation, which are redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function, ruber, calor, tumor, dollar, functulacy. Inflammatory arthritis such as rheumatoid is symmetrical arthritis because it's caused by some nasty autoantibodies. And of course, they do not discriminate between right knee and left knee. They simply do not care. Rheumatoid's pain is worse in the morning. Why? Because in the morning I have tons of autoantibodies and inflammatory debris in my knee. However, as I walk, as I move throughout the day, they get washed away. ESR and CRP are elevated because it's an inflammatory stinking systemic arthritis. Let's talk about osteoarthritis in just two slides, followed by rheumatoid in two slides. In a nutshell, osteo or degenerative joint disease is non-inflammatory. It's kind of biomechanical. Please focus on mechanical. Since it's mechanical, it's a disease of the elderly. The more you walk throughout your life, the worse it gets. You have more miles on your knee, so to speak. There are no cardinal signs of inflammation because there is no systemic inflammation. No constitutional symptoms because there is no systemic inflammation. Joint pain worsens with use because it's mechanical. The more you use it, the more friction, the worse it gets. That's why it's worse in the evening. It's asymmetrical. No elevation of ESR or CRP. All of the lab tests, like most of them, are normal. Osteoarthritis. Mechanical. Therefore, it affects the weight-bearing joints, such as the hips, the knees. Not necessarily the rest. It's not a weight-bearing unless you walk on your feet. I mean, uh, on your hands, of course. Obesity is a risk factor because mechanically you're carrying more weight. Trauma is a risk factor. It's mechanical. Manual occupation. They are mechanical. It's a chronic stinking disease because you need a lot of time to wear out your joints. Joint fluid analysis or arthrocentesis will give you white blood cells in the joint that are greater than 200 but less than 2,000. There is no synovitis in osteo morning stiffness for less than 30 minutes because it's non-inflammatory. Done with osteo, let's turn our attention to rheumatoid. It's an autoimmune disease. It's chronic. It is systemic inflammation. Therefore, cardinal signs of inflammation, redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function, constitutional symptoms, fever, weight loss, night sweats. Joint pain improves with use because as you walk, you wash away your debris. Symmetrical autoantibodies do not care about left or right. Elevation of ESR and or CRP. Rheumatoid is inflammatory, therefore affects small joints, commoner in females because most autoimmune diseases are commoner in females. Chronic disease with acute flares, joint fluid analysis will give you white blood cells more than 2,000, but less than 100,000. More than 100,000, that will be septic arthritis. So osteo was less than 2,000, but rheumatoid is greater than 2,000. You get synovitis, itis, itis, inflammation. This is an inflammatory disease. Morning stiffness for more than one hour because it's an inflammatory disease. Now to the comparison table. This is the best comparison table on the face of the planet. Osteo versus rheumatoid. Osteo is biomechanical. Rheumatoid is autoimmune. Osteo is non-inflammatory. Rheumatoid is inflammatory. Both of them are chronic, although rheumatoid can have some acute flares with neutrophils. Risk factors for osteo include age, female, sex, especially postmenopausal, heredity, obesity, occupation, trauma, and malignment. Rheumatoid, you have the HLA-DR4, the HLA-DQ, and it's more common in females because it's an autoimmune disease. Prevalence, more common than rheumatoid but rheumatoid is less common than osteo, of course. Typical age, more than 60. Rheumatoid age, 40 to 50. 
Can it transform to rheumatoid osteocannot? How about rheumatoid? It, of course, can transform into osteo. In this case, we'll call it secondary osteo because it's secondary to the rheumatoid. Pathophase, osteoarthritis, cartilage destruction, but bone growth. However, rheumatoid, cartilage destruction, bone destruction. May they both burn in hell. Uh, burn because rheumatoid is an inflammatory disease. It destroys everything. Osteophytes. Osteo. Yeah, I do have osteophytes. Rheumatoid. Nope. How about bony enlargement? More likely in osteo. How about erosions? More likely in rheumatoid. How about ankylosis or joint fusion? More likely in rheumatoid. Skeletal deformity. More likely in rheumatoid. Rheumatoid is nasty. Synovitis, of course, is the hallmark of rheumatoid. Clinically speaking, how many joints? Oligo is mono or oligo. But rheumatoid is polyarticular. Lots and lots of joints. Osteo is asymmetrical. Rheumatoid is symmetrical. Cardinal signs of inflammation absent in osteo, present in rheumatoid. Constitutional symptoms, the same shebang. In osteo, absent. Rheumatoid, they are present. Physical exam finding. Hard, bony enlargement of joints, but in rheumatoid, spongy, soft, warm, and red because of the cardinal signs of inflammation. The joint involves in osteo include weight-bearing joints, the hips, the knees, lumbar vertebrae. In rheumatoid, small joints, hands, wrists, and elbows. Osteoarthritis, it's more distal. Rheumatoid is more proximal. Okay, more distal, look at this. The oasis is distal. You, you don't live in, you usually live in the city. So, oasis, because it's osteoarthritis, more distal. OA. What do you mean by more distal? The distal interphalangeal joint, the proximal and the CMC one. DIP, you have Huberden nodes, and PIP is the Bouchard. You remember the mnemonic? Huberden has a D, and DIP has a D. How about PIP? That's a P, and that's a B. Rheumatoid is more proximal. What do you mean? You mean like the distal interphalangeal? No, 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 not distal. I said proximal. The proximal interphalangeal, the MCP, the rest. All of these are more proximal than these. What is the most commonly involved joint? CMC1. In the rheumatoid, it is the knee. What the flip is CMC? Carpo metacarpal number one of your thumb. How about nodules? They are hard in osteo. These are bony osteophytes, but in rheumatoid, they are soft and spongy because these are skin nodules. In osteoarthritis, pain predominates, but in rheumatoid, stiffness predominates. And this is the case with all of the non-inflammatory, pain predominates, and all of the inflammatory, stiffness predominates. When it comes to stiffness, since stiffness predominates in rheumatoid, you'll have stiffness for more than one hour, but less than 30 minutes in osteo. How about the worst pain? It's in the evening because it's mechanical. Rheumatoid, it's in the morning because it's inflammatory. It, the pain is relieved by rest. The pain is relieved by movement. Other articular symptoms include crepitus, locking, grinding, feeling with motion, limited range of motion, joint instability, and radicular pain. In rheumatoid, on the other hand, you have all kinds of deformities, such as swan neck deformity, boutonnier's deformity, zeta thumb deformity, ulnar deviation, piano key sign, which is radio ulnar instability, atlantoaxial subluxation, which can kill the patient if you're not careful while extending the patient's neck. Extraarticular symptoms, nope, in rheumatoid, all kinds of extraarticular symptoms such as carditis, pleurisy, skin nodules, neuropathy, scleritis, etc. Can it be an emergency? Very unlikely. How about rheumatoid? Maybe in atlantoaxial subluxation. If you hyperextend the patient's neck like an idiot, the patient can suffer from quadriplegia because you can cut the spinal cord. Diagnosis. Osteoarthritis, mainly clinical. Rheumatoid, we need clinical, we need labs, we need radiology. Osteo. CBC is normal, CMP is normal, ESR and CRP are normal. But in rheumatoid, all of them are abnormal. Anemia. No anemia. In rheumatoid, there is anemia. It's one of the extra-articular manifestations. X-ray changes. You see asymmetrical, which means right and left are not the same. Joint space narrowing. Subchondral bone sclerosis. Remember? Remember? The cartilage are being destroyed, but the bones are growing. However, in rheumatoid, everything is being destroyed. Cartilage destruction, bone growth. In rheumatoid, cartilage destruction and bone destruction. You see osteophytes in osteo because of the bone growth. Bone enlargement, bone growth. Ebernation, bone growth. But in rheumatoid, look at this. Joint space narrowing, this is the cartilage being destroyed. Marginal bone erosion, that's the bone getting kicked in the butt. 
periarticular osteopenia, soft tissue swelling, loss of cartilage and ankylosis, which is fusion of the joint, histopathology, loss of cartilage, growth of bone, rheumatoid, loss of cartilage, loss of bone, osteoporosis, osteopenia, ankylosis, etc., arthrocentesis or joint fluid analysis, you see white blood cells in the joint that are less than 2000, but in rheumatoid greater than 2000, however, in all honesty, they are less than 100,000. Predominant cells, lymphocytes, because it's a chronic disease. Rheumatoid, when you do it in the acute flare, it's going to be neutrophils. Otherwise, it's going to be lymphocyte. Osteoarthritis management, non-pharmacological, and some painkillers. Management of rheumatoid, painkillers, DMARDs, and then steroidals or non-steroidals. DMARDs include synthetic DMARDs as well as biological DMARDs. Then the biological DMARDs are further subdivided into TNF-alpha inhibitors and non-TNF-alpha inhibitors. And last resort is surgery. Would you give DMARD for osteo? Shut up. Would you give DMARDs for rheumatoid? Yep. If you like what you have seen, check out my antibiotics course on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. I have 40 videos talking about all kinds of antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my antibiotics course and my cardiac pharmacology course. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.